crafting and I particularly love to decorate my home. And as I've been cleaning and organizing, I've been finding things that have been tossed and shoved aside. And I think, hey, I could redo that and I could make it into something really cool. Now, whether I'll use it or not in my home, I don't know, but I just love to make things new. So today, I have this globe. So it was always a beautiful turquoise and it was kind of a European script on there. And, the colors were beautiful, but I've had this thing for probably 20 years, and it is so terribly faded. And one day I thought, I can do something very uh, abstract and make it a really cool contemporary looking glow. So I have no idea if this will work. I have no idea if this will turn into anything usable or if I'll wind up tossing it in the trash. But anyway, I thought you might want to go on this journey with me and see what it turns out to be. So first of all, what I wanted to do is I want to paint everything that's water in this dark navy uh, heirloom traditions polo paint. It's the navy that I did the shelf in and it's an almost blackish navy. Super, super dark but super beautiful. Uh, so I thought if I painted all the water in the navy, then I wanted to do something really cool on the land. I'm going to paint with a metallic paint pen. Then what I want to try to do is actually gold leaf the land. So it wouldn't be just a painted surface, but it would actually be um, gold leaf. So I, I really want to try that and see if I can pull that off. So let's see. I think the first thing I want to do is I want to outline the land masses with the gold pen. This is a D Deco Color Premium Prime Premio, <laughs> kind of a long name there, but it's an oil-based metallic gold. So let's start over here with something big and easy, like Africa. How about we start there? So I'm going to lay this down, and again, I'm not even sure if you can see it, but here we go. everyone. Well, today as I was putting together the Painted Globe uh, tutorial video, I began to reminisce about when I was young and the very earliest memories of crafts that I did. I grew up in western Oklahoma on a farm as a single child. I had no brothers and sisters to play with and I didn't have access to friends in town very often. When they would come out, it was a treat and a treasure and we'd play games because I, otherwise I never had anyone to play games with. So I spent a lot of time doing crafts. Now back then, we didn't have the crafting stores that we have now, but my mom would somehow bring home the latest craft that the ladies at school were doing and she'd show me how and I would literally spend hours and hours and hours working on these projects. I remember my very first um, craft. I think I got it as a kit for Christmas and it was the little looms with the little stretchy bands and you would weave them and you'd make pot holders. And I, I made enough pot holders, I think, and for the entire county. Um, but I loved doing it and it just fueled my desire to create at that time. I ran out of little stretchy things pretty soon though and I put them aside. I remember though, one of my most vivid memories is my mom brought home um, I don't remember exactly the supplies she brought home. I don't even remember if we poured the little uh, plaster of Paris oval plaques, but I remember there were these little small oval plaster of Paris plaques and um, I would decoupage some kind of, of pattern on there. And I don't remember what 
that was either. That is really odd. I don't remember if I cut the, the patterns out. I don't remember where we got them, but I remember putting flowers and all different kinds of pictures on them and gluing them on. And then, way back then, there was some type of crackle medium that we painted over the top, and then I would let that dry, and then um, it would crackle, and then I would put an antiquing gel over it, and it would fall down into the cracks, and I would wipe it off. That's a very popular craft to date, but way back then, I'd never seen anything like that. And I, like I said, I don't know where my mom got the supplies, and I don't know if she were, was maybe doing it in her class because she was a school teacher. But I remember uh, in our little bitty house, there wasn't very many places to do that kind of stuff. And we had a tiny little utility room. Our washer and dryer were side by side. So I remember laying out a great big towel on top of both of them, and I laid out my crafts, and I stood. And I worked on those crafts until it was time to go to bed or go to school or do something else. Um, and I just absolutely loved making those plaques. So again, I probably made enough plaques for the entire county. And my mom, um, I don't know what she did with them all. I think she probably hung a few up in the house, but she probably took them and gave them away to friends and what have you. Or I think I actually gave some to family members and things for Christmas and what have you. But I can remember I didn't want to stop. I loved to craft and I still love to create to this day. Here I am putting on the second coat of the navy blue paint. I guess in the middle of the night, the video fairies deleted me putting on coat one. So, you will see coat two and pretend it's coat one. Here you will see what it looks like after I've completed coat two. Very solid dark navy, and I have completed and touched up the gold paint pen. A few years later, when I was in fourth grade, uh, I was in 4-H, and there was a lot of things that 4-H taught me, and I don't hear much about 4-H anymore, uh, maybe because I'm in the metro area and my kids are all grown, but I do think back then, it was a wonderful program. I did, I did demonstrations with a friend. We would cook. We would make... Um, uh, peanut patties over and over and over again. I would do speeches. We would cook uh, those things and we would demonstrate them. I remember sometimes we didn't have ingredients. We'd absolutely forget them and I'd we'd just keep going and we'd dump something in and say, oh, here was the sugar. And, and it wasn't sugar, but we were, we were improvising, you know, even at, you know, fourth grade level. It was, it was just absolutely cool and fun when I look back on it. Uh, but another thing that 4-H really brought alive in me was sewing. So the very first thing we ever did was a handkerchief or a headscarf. I'm not sure which, but it was a square of fabric. And all that we did was pull the threads out to ravel it. And there was no sewing at all involved. Well, I was hooked. After that, I think we did an apron. Now, my mom had a really, really old Singer sewing machine, and it was just really, you know, it could have used a, a stitching post or someplace to really bring it alive again. And she was just a marginal seamstress, but she had a friend who taught with her, and she agreed to take me uh, several afternoons after school a week, and we would sew. And she taught me how to sew, and I am so thankful to her for this day. She was so patient, and she was so kind and she walked me through the steps of making the apron and it got a blue ribbon in 4-H. Then we went on to the next thing and then there was a dress or something I had to make and it just fueled it from there. Now by the time I was in the sixth grade, the thing I asked for for Christmas was Hello, I'm back, and this is dry now, so um, actually I left it to dry for several hours, so it'd be good and dry. Um, it's looking really great. One thing, though, uh, with the, the clay-based paint, if you don't dab to get an even finish, which I did not do, um, you're going to have texture, and it's got a little bit more texture than I would like for this particular project. So I'm going to take this sandpaper, and I'm going to sand it 
just the blue spots, and then I'm going to put an additional coat on there. So here I have sanded, and you'll see that it's a lighter blue in areas, and so I am adding the final coat. You will notice that periodically I take a little sponge brush and dab the paint. This will eliminate brush strokes. I think that it's done. I need to touch the gold up a couple of places. Uh, but since I'm going to gold leaf it, I'm not sure if I even need to touch the gold up. Um, maybe around the rim. Uh, that way if I don't get the gold leaf all the way out to the edge of the continents, then at least it'll have a good clear uh, coat of the gold pen. Uh, so I don't want to mess with this to put the gold leaf on until... Um, it is completely dry because I have found, as you can see with my hands, that I tend to stick my hands on it where it's wet while it's uh, while I'm painting. So I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to let it dry completely. And then I'm going to try to put the gold leaf on. In the sixth grade, for Christmas, I asked for a sewing machine. And I got it. It was a Christmas Eve present, really, really late. It was probably 11.30 or midnight. And I got my sewing machine and I stayed up the entire night. I was so tired by the next morning, but my mom let me. She let me stay up all night long and sew. And you could hardly pry me away from that sewing machine the rest of my days. I still have, no, I don't still have that machine. Years later, when my when my baby girl was getting ready to be born, my dad bought me a new one with all the bells and whistles. So let me correct myself. I don't still have that very machine, but I still have one of my earliest uh, Kenmore sewing machines. Um, that first machine, though, it stayed with me for, let me see, that would be eight years. And I think the only reason I got a new one was because I did want all the bells and whistles. But I would sew my clothes. Up until then, my mom had hired a, the lady down the road to sew me clothes. We'd pick out the material and we'd pick out the patterns and we'd take them. And she was a wonderful seamstress. But then I wanted to design my own. So I would take a pattern and I would, now this is in the 70s, you understand. There was an incredible creative license. I would make my bell bottoms bigger at the bottom. I would make a jacket with sleeves and I would do all kinds of weird collars and I would do all kinds of weird uh, cuffs on the sleeves. I would combine patterns and this was the age of double knit too. So uh, God forgive us for that, but it was. And I would have wild double knit patterns and I would connect them with solid colors and I'm telling you, I sewed and sewed and sewed. I did tie-dye, I did halter tops, but the day I got my sewing machine, I was hooked. Here I'm getting ready to put the gold leaf on. It came with a bottle of glue and it looked just like white glue. And the instructions were to paint it where you wanted the glue. So I have done this off camera. Uh, it was just simply painting the white glue on the gold portions. Uh, the instructions said to take your brush and to slide the gold leaf off of the paint, off of the plastic or the parchment paper. Um, it didn't want to slide, so after I realized I could just turn it upside down and just literally stick it to the glue and then pull the paper off, that is how I did. Then I took my brush and I just dabbed the gold leaf down so that it would uh, stick. And you will see too that it, uh, where there was no glue, it would pull away, which is exactly what you want it to do. I would take those larger chunks, I would put them on a portion with glue, and simply take my brush and tap them down. I worked around the globe this way. Where there were por 
portions um, that didn't need to be stuck, you could simply take the paintbrush and just rub it across there and, and it would uh, break them off and it would leave a good clean edge. Um, I think the key here is to make sure that when you do paint the glue on, you don't put the glue where you don't want it and um, then of course it will it will stick where you do put it. Uh, I didn't find that putting the uh, glue on was all that difficult. Um, it just uh, I used a pointed paintbrush and I just uh, even in the small islands and the small areas um, it was very simple to paint the glue and then the, the leafing process went very, very smooth. Uh, I did wait until the entire globe had dried for probably 24, 48 hours. Then once I had all the gold leaf on, I took a soft cloth and I just burnished or brushed it, knocking off all the remaining little bits of gold leaf. So crafting has been in my blood at it, it, some of my earliest memories, and I am so thankful for it. I'm so thankful that my mom would bring me home craft supplies to a little girl stuck way out in the country who didn't have brothers and sisters to play with. Crafting was my friend, and it still is today. Now, I don't do a lot of crafting. I don't have a lot of projects around the house to do, but I do love to craft. I think that is one of the things that got me in to doing jewelry and not only did I do beaded jewelry but I began to do metal smithing and silver smithing and then I became an instructor which I love sharing how to do crafts I love show sharing how to do metal smithing and make jewelry um, also when I was in my 20s, I was a florist and I loved to create flower arrangements. I created tons and tons of uh, wedding arrangements in silk and I created tons and tons of fresh flower arrangements. So I have done so many things creatively in my life and I can't tell you how thankful I am for that. I still love to create and I still love to share with others how to create. So I hope you're blessed by my videos because it makes my heart sing, not just to create, but to share with you and teach you how to do the same. Here you see me painting over the metallic base with a metallic gold paint. I had originally thought I would leave it as is, but it was just too dark against the bright um, contrast of the gold leaf. So I painted the metallic paint over it, kind of in a dry brush fashion, and then I took the gold paint pen and I highlighted it to add a little more shine. And here's the finished product. It turned out beautiful and that gold leaf shines. And I'm not afraid anymore to try gold leaf on other projects. In fact, I'm eager to try. Click subscribe and tap the bell. You never know what's coming next.